Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neeson. Welcome to the show today. Thank you for listening. The name of the show is Torah Life Ministries. And Torah is not a Jewish word, folks. Torah is a word for believers. That means instructions or guideline. And the first five books of the Bible, starting in Genesis, are the instructions of our wonderful Creator. The problem is many people today that read the Bible are told to start in the Gospels or in the New Testament and they never get to the instructions. And I am telling you, if you read the instructions and guidelines of our Creator, you'll be able to understand everything else the Bible says after that much more clearly. This is why there's so much confusion and disagreement about what the Bible actually says, because people are only reading half of it, folks. Listen, folks, there is a page in every Bible that needs to be ripped out. That's the page that separates the original covenant from the renewed covenant or as many people say, the Old Testament from the New Testament. The Bible is not two books. The Bible is one book. And when you start looking at, like, at two books, that's where confusion comes in. But when you start understanding it's one book with a continuous story from the beginning all the way to Revelations to the end, you know everything that happened will happen and is going to happen. And it's just great to be aware of these things to understand what our Creator wanted us to do and how He wanted us to live. It gives a great example in the scriptures of when the Israelites were in war with the Egyptians and Moses held his hands up, the Israelites were successful. And when his hands fell down, the Israelites started to lose. And he was told to keep his hands up by our Creator. And even so, he had help from the other people around him that helped him keep his hands up and they were successful. Well, we take this principle and we go back uh, a little bit more forward, actually, into the book of Judges. And we see every time the children of Israel or the believers of our wonderful Creator were faithful to His guidelines and instructions, they were successful. But when they got away from His guidelines and instructions and disobeyed, they started to lose. They started to lose the wars. They started not to be successful. They were no more longer victorious. And then when they were obedient again, things started to change around again. So you can relate to being obedient to our Creator's instructions to success or, or failure, or as I like to say, because the Bible says it clearly, blessings and curses. That's what the Bible says. He says, if you diligently follow my guidelines and instructions over and over again, he says, do not add or take away, but keep my guidelines and instructions. So the information is there, folks. And uh, the problem is, if you're not reading it, you don't know what it said. And if you're listening to somebody else, then we have an issue. Here's a great example of what's going on today with the church and why there's so much failure and, and, and all is not going well with the church. Here's what's going on, folks. It's like if you have a movie that you want to go see and you've been looking forward to this movie and you go to the movie, but you get there late. You get to the movie late, and, and let's say you got there in the middle of the movie. So you missed the whole beginning of the movie, so you don't know exactly what's going on. And you ask the person next to you, what's going on? And they give you their opinion on what they believe is going on. The problem is they showed up to the movie right before you did, in the middle of the movie. They haven't been there from the beginning, so they just don't know. It makes so much more sense to watch it from the beginning so you understand and you know what is going on and you can continually understand throughout the story what's going on and you can see the ending more clearly of what's going to happen and understand it. Well, that's what's going on here today is many people, including uh, many Christians, uh, they're not reading their whole Bible. They're not reading the full story. They're coming in in the middle and they've missed uh, all the important uh, instructions that have been set up to show people how a creator wants us to live and how he wants us to act. And it's repeated over and over again in the scriptures. If you follow my guidelines, if you listen to my instructions, don't add or take away from them. Now, many Christians will refer to these instructions as the law. And there we run into a problem because they're taught in the church that they're no longer under the law. And when you think that, they think like, well, if we're not under the law, we're not under his instructions, <clears throat> what are we under? And then people misunderstand or the church misunderstands the teaching. It says, well, there's a whole new set of orders, a whole new set of instructions, but it's not really a whole set. It's just simple. It's one or two commandments. That's it. So all those other commandments that our creator gave us that said, 
so many things and so much valuable information and great lessons for life. It made up the whole Bible, folks. You don't have to listen to any of that because now it's all easy. Now all we got to do is just, you know, do what we enjoy and do what we love. As, as long as we said a couple of words with our lips, accepted Yeshua, the one you call Jesus, everything's going to be fine and dandy. Folks, our creator would not have given us the instructions if he didn't want us to use them. He wouldn't have wasted his time or our time. And he told us those instructions were so important. We are to take them off paper and have them on our heart and to know them by heart, to study them by heart so, so, so we know. And it says a person is known by their fruit. And when they talk about that, is, a, is this person following my guidelines and instructions? And me, I always look at when it says, if you do follow my guidelines and instructions, all will be well with you. Now, who wouldn't want all to be well with them? And it's not all according to what we think is best or, or, or man's ways. It's according to our creator's ways. I want all to be well with me according to my relationship with him. I want to do the best job I could do possibly uh, at that. And if people say, well, you, you don't have to follow those rules and those guidelines and everything else, I say, look, I want to follow them. And I'm not following them to be saved. I'm saved by the blood of Messiah. You don't do these things to be saved. You know, I do them because I am saved, because he did die for me. And I think he deserves back me listening to him. He knows better than I do. He's smarter than I am. And he knows what is best for me, you, and all of us. And I'm not going to lean on my own understanding. I'm going to lean on his understanding to direct my path, as it says in the scriptures. And we see a whole story of, uh, of people in the Bible that either listened to him or disobeyed him. And we see the consequences that came upon these people, the curses or the bad things or whatever you want to refer to them as when they were disobedient. But then when they became obedient, we see how those things changed and things changed around. And I've seen and many of you have seen amazing testimonials of people that hit rock bottom and things have come around. And many times they didn't do anything. They just ha had the glory of our wonderful creator reveal himself to them. And just as he saved us from death row and saved us for sin, he'll take somebody who's at the bottom of the pit, who's on the last breath, and if they repent, he will reveal the information to them and their eyes will begin to be opened. And it is my prayer that you listening here today, your eyes will be opened more to understand the Hebraic roots of our wonderful creator, Yeshua. And once you do that, you start to understand why he had such a problem with the, with the Pharisees and the sages. Because they weren't, you know, he didn't ever say, don't do the Sabbath. He was saying, you're telling people to do it the wrong way. He never said, do not follow these commandments. He says, it's your attitude that goes along with the commandments that the issue was. So Yeshua told us over and over again uh, that we need to keep the commandments, that we should never stray away from them. And somebody says, well, where did he say that? And I say, well, these words go and sin no more. Sin is transgression of the law or breaking the commandments. So if we translate Yeshua's words, the one you call Jesus, down to the most simplest level, he says, Go and stop living against the guidelines and instructions of our wonderful creator. Stop living against uh, his instructions and, start, and, and, and you're living according to the world's ways. He said, reverse that. Live according to our creator's instructions and, and, and stop following the world's ways, which so many people are doing today, including the church. And this is why there's so much disease and failure of the church today. We are responsible for this, folks, because, you know, our actions reveal the heart, as it says in the scriptures, as a face reflects in water, the heart reveals the person, and a person is known by their fruit. Well, what is our fruit showing us, folks? What are we doing, and, 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 and how are we doing it? And we got to realize these things, is what's motivating us. Are we trying to please our pastor? Are we trying to please you know, some uh, our friends? Or are we trying to please our creator, who's given us these guidelines and instructions, and says, do this and pleaded with us. Do this. Don't ignore my instructions. It says in Hosea 4, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But it goes on to say, because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being priests for me. Since you have forgotten the Torah or the guidelines and instructions, or as the church says, the law of your creator, not only do I forget you, but I also forget your children. And some translations will say, but your, your seed will suffer. On the opposite end of that, it says to learn the guidelines and instructions of our Creator and teach them to your children every night as they go down and as they get up. 
and always hold to those guidelines and instructions. You see, when Yeshua, the one you call Jesus, was being tempted in the desert by the enemy, he quoted scripture. He knew scripture, and he lived scripture. And the scriptures he quoted were right from the guidelines and instructions. When it says in the book of Timothy that all scripture is profitable for man, they were not talking about the so-called New Testament because that wasn't written yet. They were talking about the Torah, the first five books of the Bible that so many people say we no longer re need to read those books. When you've never read it, you don't understand it, you've rejected it, and you continue to reject it, and you wonder why there's consequences that, folks, it's very clear and it's very simple. Now, as it says in the scriptures, there's a narrow path and a wide path. But it says the narrow path, only few will find it. Only few will find it. And that narrow path is the one that leads to that narrow gate. So there are many people out there confessing Yeshua, the one you call Jesus, as Messiah. But if that's the case, it would say many will find him. But the scriptures say only few will find him. Why? Because I'm giving you this message right now that you're hearing on the radio or the internet or wherever you're hearing this. And if you're a Christian going to church, no matter how long you've been going to church, as a matter of fact, the longer you've been going, the more brainwashed you become and the harder you'll, hard time you'll have with this message. But if you listen this long, then something is stirring you up to investigate more. That maybe something I'm telling you about the Bible is true, and maybe you've been deceived all these years, and you need to look more into why we are not keeping the guidelines and instructions. Why the church is not telling people they need to keep the guidelines and instructions. It's not about salvation, folks. We're saved by the blood of Yeshua. That's the only way we're saved. He set us free from, from our sin, and we never deserve this, this free gift. We can't work our way to get it. It's about obeying and listening and having no other idols and just paying attention to what our Creator says. To have eyes that see and ears that hear. That's what He wants us to do so we could be blessed and all will be well with us. But we're not even doing it for us. We're doing it because He says, go and make disciples. We're doing it to let others know we've been set free. We have an opportunity. And we want everyone to have that opportunity. You understand, by Him dying for you, wasn't setting you free from your sins in the future. His grace and mercy will cover us when we miss the mark, yes, if we have a righteous heart. But if we use his death as an excuse to keep living sin, we don't have his mercy and his grace. We are in trouble. He knows our heart, and our heart is evil. And we need to pray for a new heart. And we need to change our thinking and stop thinking our own ways, because the Bible says there's a way before each man that seems right but ends in death. And they're not talking about a physical death, because we're all going to die a physical death. They're talking about a spiritual death. We need to be right with his word if we want him to be right with us. You know, and it takes time, but we have to understand we need to be moving in the right direction and not the wrong direction. And praise our wonderful Creator for the great mercy and patience that He has with us on a regular basis. Praise Him for that. So much mercy and grace He gives us in our, in our stubbornness and in our, in our slowness to get right with His Word, His guidelines and instructions. But folks, the time is now. James 4, 17 says to know good and not do it to him it is sin. Well, maybe before you heard this message, you didn't know this, but I am telling you his instructions are still valid for us today. His instructions and guidelines are just as important as if you have a child and you want to tell that child things to keep that child safe and blessed. And that's what they're there to do for us. And that's what they're doing for us. But just as a little child wouldn't listen to his parent, if we don't listen to our creator, we are putting ourselves in danger, a great danger, because our danger isn't just some physical act or discomfort or disease that might happen here on earth. Our danger is where we're going to spend eternity. And we need to think about that more, not only when we're on our deathbed or after an accident. We need to think about that every day. Why we're here today is because he set us free, dying for us. And where we're going in the future and where we're going to spend eternity. It's very clear in the scripture when it says, you know, those that say they knew me but do not follow my ways is a liar. He goes on to say, they say, didn't we prophesy in your name and do all these things in your name? And he said, get away from me. I did not know you. Because a person is known by their fruit. And the sheep hear his voice. Are we listening? Are we responding? Or are we doing something else than he tells us to do? Ask yourself this. And don't make excuses like many people do. I'll give you an example. Take the fourth commandment. The fourth commandment says keep the Sabbath holy. The Sabbath is Friday night to Saturday night. 
Now, many Christians that I know, and this is a great example of why the Bible says that there's a narrow path and only few will find it, because that narrow path is Torah, his instructions, leading to the narrow gate, which is Yeshua Messiah. So the fourth command says, keep it holy. And a lot of Christians say, well, I keep it on Sunday. Well, no, it says keep Friday night to Saturday night holy. It doesn't say keep Sunday holy or Monday holy or Tuesday holy. And those that even say they keep it holy on Sunday, they're not even following the Sabbath on that day of, of these instructions. But you see, we can't twist things for our own way. It says lean on his understanding, not our understanding. But we try to twist it and make excuses for things we're doing and try to make loopholes and everything else. You understand when you accept Yeshua as Messiah, first of all, you become Israel. You are now the commonwealth of Israel. And the guidelines and instructions are for every single person. It doesn't matter where you came from. It matters where you're going. The guidelines and instructions for every single person that confesses Yeshua as Messiah. Now they got this book they have to live by. And he said, you make a covenant with me today. The covenant is, I will be your creator. I will lead you. I will follow you. I will guide you. But you will listen to me. And we can't break that, folks. We can't break that because he tells us not to make a promise you won't keep. Do not swear in my name. And when you accept Yeshua as Messiah, you are confessing and off into the world. I am going to follow Yeshua and his ways, Yahweh, more than anything else, as first in my life. And then you say that and you don't do it is worse than not even saying it at all according to the scriptures. So we need to, to repent, which is turn from our, our ways that lived against the guidelines and instructions for so long. That's the word that the church doesn't even want us to use anymore, the word repent. Repent, to have a new mind, to have a new heart, and, and to show remorse, and repent, and change our ways, and change our thinking. See, the Bible doesn't say accept Yeshua and then repent. The Bible says repent and then accept Yeshua. When you accept Yeshua, something is supposed to change, folks, your heart. You're to love what he loves and hate what he hates. And how can you hate what he hates if you're not reading the scriptures and you don't even know what he hates? How can you love what he loves if you're not reading the scriptures? You can't even know what he loves. You have to read his word to know that, to understand that. You know, it says the original covenant is a schoolmaster. Well, you know what? You learn from a schoolmaster. That's a teacher. That's somebody you learn from. You learn from the original covenant what our creator loves and what our creator hates. Just think about the first time that you were in love with somebody. You would do anything to make that person happy. And if you can get a letter or something, and find out what makes that person happy for sure, you would study it and you would make sure you're covering all those bases. Well, we need to be in love with our creator. And we do have a letter. We have a book of everything he loves and everything he hates. The scary part, folks, is if you looked at everything he said he loved and wanted us to do, and everything he said he hated and wanted us to avoid, and then you looked at your life, and I'm talking to most Christians out there, you know, I'm not talking to the non-believers out there who didn't say they were going to accept Yeshua, the one you call Jesus, and follow his ways. No, I'm talking to you, those that did make that confession. If you look at your life and measure it up to those guidelines and instructions, you will find it's something you didn't try to do and failed. You just didn't try to do it. And that is the problem. And that's what's going to put you in great danger when it says, get away from me. I did not know you because a person is known by their fruit. See, the fruit isn't was that person successful or not? The fruit is, what effort did that person make? Our creator will determine the success or the or of, that, of that action, of what happened. But it's up to us to determine what kind of effort we're going to make to accomplish that and do that. And many of you say you've just been deceived, you didn't know any better. Well, it's right in your scriptures. If you read your scriptures and listened to our creator more than you listen to man, you wouldn't be able to be deceived by these things. You have to have a strong foundation. And the Torah, the guidelines and instructions of our Creator, is the foundation of all Scripture. And without that, you might have a beautiful house on top of this little foundation, and it's just going to blow away when things get rough. But if you have a solid foundation, and you build a beautiful house by, by working on your relationship with Yeshua, the one you call Jesus, you will have a solid house on a solid foundation like Yeshua talks about. And the more solid your foundation is, when things go wrong, when something's happening, you will not break. You will not shatter. But when your foundation is weak, you can be deceived by words. You can be deceived by many different things. And this is a big problem. Not only does it say a person is known by their fruit, 
that could be a good thing, but that's also a bad thing because when we see and compare according to what Scripture says, sometimes people ask me, well, you know, is that person a Christian talking about somebody we might know? And my answer is, if somebody has to ask that question, you're not doing a good enough job. Everyone should know whether it is on, on, on the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you act, or the way you glow. People should know you're a believer because you should openly talk about it over and over again. I ask you, how many people did you tell today that Yeshua died for them? And you say you get nervous talking to strangers, and I say, well, don't just tell a stranger. Tell people you know. But going back to strangers, most people have no problem walking up to a stranger and letting them know or asking them directions somewhere. So why do you have directions to go to someone and say, we have a creator and he died for us. Hallelujah. Praise our wonderful creator. Folks, it's not too late. That is the true good news. There's still time left to repent, to change, to get things right. And we, as uh, people who've confessed Yeshua as Messiah, should have the strongest desire to be in good standing with our Creator. And we need to study His Word to know what that is. And we need to continuously work on this and every single day uh, giving ourselves over to His ways, not our ways, spending more time in prayer, praising our wonderful Creator for all the things that are happening and thanking Him again for all the things that happened and will continue to happen. Having a positive, upbeat outlook not based on our own power or our own ideas, but based on that he died for us so we could have life. And he says in Ezekiel 33, 11, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people. I only want them to change from their wicked ways so they can live, so they can have life. If you think that the original covenant or the old covenant is no longer valid and we only need to follow the New Testament, well, I tell you this, the New Testament points back to the Old Testament. Everything that they did in the New Testament wasn't made up. It wasn't new. It was stuff they were already following and doing according to the Torah, the guidelines and instructs of our Creator. And even when Yeshua was put to death, these things didn't stop. These things didn't change. It says in the scriptures, not one jot or tittle. That's none of it. None of the law. None of the guidelines and instructions. None of the Torah should be done away with. That we should continue to seek His Word. Continue to do his word. That's what it says in the Bible. Now, some of you listening right now might say, well, that sounds like legalism. It certainly isn't legalism, but if somebody's going to call you a legalist for following the guidelines and structure of our Creator, that's a wonderful compliment. You're doing them so well that people are noticing. But to make an excuse and say, we no longer need to do that because uh, everything was nailed to the cross or one of these other lame excuses that aren't even scriptural is a serious offense and something we should be. We should be really concerned about. But the great news is again, hallelujah, that there's still time left. And if anyone listening right now wants more information of what to do, of how to do it, of what the Torah is, it's right there in the Bible. It's right there in the original covenant. Genesis means Bereshit, means beginning. Just start reading it and pray. Pray to our Creator that He'll open your eyes and show you things that, that you haven't seen before. If you're one of those people that think you read the Bible, you know all that's in there, and you don't need to read it again, well, you definitely need to read it again. We don't know what we don't know. And if you think that, you're in trouble. It says, Yeshua came not for the righteous, but those that know they are sinners. Hallelujah, folks. We need to love righteousness, love what Yeshua loved, and hate what he hated. I have over a thousand videos on my website, TorahLifeMinistries.org, to help people understand the instructions and building a strong foundation according to the Torah the guidelines and instructions of our Creator. It's there, folks. I grew up, I wasn't a believer. I was uh, beyond uh, a sinner. I wasn't a believer. I was somebody who didn't have a relationship with our Creator ever in my whole life, and nobody in my family did. Until I started to read the words of our wonderful Creator and realized, who do I want to serve? And my answer was, I don't want to serve man. I want to serve my Creator. And we all have this opportunity to do so. And I just want to let the world know that and tell people that that's one of the reasons why we have this show. That's why I do my videos on my website. We go out and we street evangelize in South Florida or wherever I am traveling around the world. And I do do events all over. You can see the events on my website on TorahLifeMinistries.org. And then every Friday night, you can come talk to me live on our show. We have every Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern time. You can just go to the internet, go to the website, and it's done via YouTube. And you could ask any questions. You could talk to us. But even at any other time, you might have a question. I'm here to answer them and tell you what the Bible says about what topic you may have. 
But don't be confused. It's my prayer, everyone listening right now, that our Creator's will will be done in your life and that your will and your heart will be satisfied with our Creator's will. That you'd learn to separate your own wants and needs and want your wants and needs to be His wants and needs. That we'd understand these things and when we get these things uh, right, because that's the righteousness. That's where the word comes from. It's right according to our Creator's words. That your eyes would be open. That you would have wisdom to see His Torah his foundation, his instructions, to understand them and resonate with them, that it would become part of your DNA. And you would say, I got no other way to do it. I got no other option. And I don't care what the world says. I'm going to start keeping the Sabbath on the day I'm supposed to keep the Sabbath, Friday night to Saturday night. I'm going to start following the commandments. I'm going to start eating the way he told me to eat. And I'm going to avoid not eating what he told me was an abomination. It shouldn't even be in my body. I'm going to start doing the righteous thing. You see, folks, most Christians will have no problem re- rebuking something that they've overcome or seen the truth of, something like homosexuality or the murdering of babies and abortion. Most Christians agree those things are bad, those things are evil. You know what? The Bible also called it an abomination to break the Sabbath and to eat unclean things. And they're equally as bad. But many people don't see it that way because that's not the way they're taught because they're not looking at all the things. They're just looking at some of the things. But the Bible says, if you diligently follow all my guidelines and instructions, it says not to add or take away, but keep the commandments. So remember that, folks. That's from the Bible, not from me. Do not add or take away, but keep the commandments. And again, I'm here to help you. I'm in South Florida, but I travel all over the world. You can get my... My website, Torah Life Ministries, and my phone number will be given out after the program here today. I'm here to help anyone that has any questions. If you're new to understanding the foundation of our Creator known as the guidelines and instructions of the Torah, just turn to Genesis and start reading your Bible from the beginning. Remember that example with the movie. Get through it. And if there's something you don't understand, I'm here to help you. There's a lot of information out there that could help you. And, you know, we continuously learn, we continuously grow, and we're here to help each other. So I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to me today on this show and understand there are a lot of people out there that are are new to the faith and there are a lot of people out there that have been doing this a long time. But unless somebody has a good foundation, a good scriptural foundation based in the guidelines and Torah, it doesn't matter how long somebody's been doing what or what a person's doing or even how new a person is. What matters is, you know, are we answering the call? Are we truly his sheep? And I pray you are. Thank you very much and have a blessed day and shalom, shalom. Torah Life Ministries come out of the world. Messiah people seek the truth.